Welcome back to Medical and Medical and in today's video we shall be covering quantitative and qualitative research in details. To start with, what is quantitative research? A quantitative research is defined as a type of research that deals with quantitative data. In other words, it relies on the principle of proof or verifiability. In quantitative research, the knowledge is derived from what can be proven by direct observation and it focuses on measurements. And when we look at its characteristics, a quantitative research is usually concise and narrow in nature and it collects information that is under conditions of control. This type of research usually uses structures, procedures and formal instruments to collect information, for example questionnaires and interviews. And the most important uh, feature of this is that the analysis is done through the use of statistical procedures. Another important point is that in quantitative research, we do analysis by using statistical procedures. And the investigator in this case does not participate in any of these events that is under investigations. We begin with a preconceived idea about how these concepts are interrelated and the emphasis is usually objective in the collection and the analysis of this data. We can classify quantitative research into either experimental research or non-experimental research. To start with, experimental research is a type of study that is concerned with the cause-effect relationship. This involves a manipulation or a control of independent variables, for example, the cause of a disease and the measurements of dependent variables, that the effect. In this research, you as a researcher, you are interested in controlling the extraneous variables that may influence the results of the study. Experimental research, we can break it down into two, that is the true experiment and quasi-experiment. With true experiments, we have three characteristics, that is manipulation, control, and randomization. Manipulation of experimental variables of this research, and then control is done by introduction of one or more controls over the experimental situation, including the introduction of a control or a comparison group. This control usually ensures that the dependent variable is as a result of independent variable and not other variables. So a control group is the group that does not receive an experimental treatment. And another characteristic is randomization. Randomization is brought about in such a way that the subjects in the study are randomly assigned to either the experimental or the comparison group. And each individual or uh, participant has an equal chance of being placed or selected into any of the groups in the experimental study. The second uh, classification of experimental research is the quasi-experiment. This is an experimental research in which there is no control group or the subjects are not randomly assigned to groups. And it usually involves mostly implementing specific treatment and later examining the effects of the treatment using a selected method of uh, measurement. An example of a quasi-experiment is a, a randomized clinical trials, for example, when there is an introduction of a new drug or a discovery of a new uh, medication for given disease. Another type of quantitative research is a non-experimental research, also known as descriptive research. A non-experimental research is a type of study that explores a phenomenon in real-life situations. So the purpose of this type of research is to observe, describe, and explore the aspect of a given situation as it is without any manipulation. So it does not really try to explain or understand the underlying causes of any variable of interest. And this non-experimental research or descriptive research can be divided into three types, that is the survey, correlational studies, and comparative studies. So a survey is a, a type of descriptive research which focuses on obtaining information regarding the prevalence, the distribution, and the interrelationships of variables within a population and a study. This survey usually obtains information 
from a sample of people by a means of self-reporting. For example, people in a given population can respond to a series of posted questions by an investigator. And the survey asks subjects to report their attitudes, their opinions, perceptions, or behaviors towards the topic and the study. The advantage of this type is that you have the ability to provide accurate information on a given population using a relatively small samples and also to obtain a large amount of data quickly without any major expenses. The disadvantage of it is that the data may be very unreliable because of self-reporting and people tend to provide socially acceptable responses towards the questions that are posted. The second type of non-experimental research is a correlational study. A correlational study is a type of research where a researcher examines the strength of relationships between two variables. This is done by determining how changes in one variable is associated with a change in another variable. For example, how does a change in variable X related to variable Y? The relationship from correlational studies may be either a positive relationship or a negative relationship. And the magnitude and direction of this relationship is indicated by a correlational coefficient. So in correlational studies, one group of subjects is measured on two variables. Then the third type is uh, the comparative studies. So in comparative studies, you're doing a study to examine the difference or the comparison between two groups on some independent variables of interest. Unlike the experimental design that we discussed earlier, the researcher is not able to manipulate any of the independent variables. Comparative studies can also be classified into two types, the retrospective comparative studies and prospective comparative studies. In retrospective comparative studies, dependent variables are identified in the present condition and an attempt is made to determine the independent variable that occurred in the past. An example of a retrospective study is a case control studies. In prospective comparative studies, an independent variable is identified at the present time and then the subjects are followed in future to observe the dependent variable. And an example of this is a cohort study. Okay, what are the differences between experimental and descriptive research? In descriptive research, it merely describes something whereas an experimental research tests an hypothesis. A second difference is that the researchers can control variables in experimental research, but they cannot control these variables in a descriptive research or a non-experimental research. The third difference is that descriptive research is subjective but an experimental research is objective. And lastly, the experimental research can lead to predictions, but a descriptive research cannot lead to any prediction. Let's move to the second type, that is the qualitative research. A qualitative research is a type of research in which a systematic, subjective approach is used to describe life experiences and give them a meaning. The data collected is in the form of words rather than numbers, and then it is regrouped into categories, themes, and patterns. The characteristics of a qualitative research are that it collects the information without any formal structured instruments. A characteristic of a qualitative research, it involves a sustained interaction with the people being studied, and it does not attempt to control the context of the research but rather than it attempts to capture the context in its entirety. This type of research attempts to understand the phenomenon as a whole. It has a few preconceived ideas and stresses the importance of people's interpretation of events and circumstances rather than the researcher's interpretation. The analysis in this case is in an organized but intuitive fashion and does not aim to generalize the findings. And this is a research that doesn't aim to generalize any findings. On the downside, qualitative research has uh, disadvantages. For example, 
It permits the research to go beyond the statistical results usually reported in a quantitative research. And it also enables the study of attitudes and other emotional behaviors. Let's then look at the types of qualitative studies. Qualitative studies can be classified into either phenomenological studies, ethnographic studies, grounded theories, historical studies, and case studies. Let's start with the phenomenological studies. These are type of studies that examine the human experiences throughout the descriptions that are provided by people involved in this study. We call these experiences a lived experiences. And the goal of a phenomenological study is to describe the meaning that experiences hold for each subject. So in this type of studies, the people or the population is asked to describe the experiences as they perceive them. The second type of qualitative study is an ethnographic study. An ethnographic study is the one that involves the collection and analysis of data about cultural groups. And in this type of study, a systematic process of observing, detailing, describing, documenting, and analyzing the life ways or patterns of a culture in order to grasp the life ways of people in their familiar environment is applied. The researcher usually lives with the people and becomes part of their culture or he or she interviews people who are considered knowledgeable about a given culture. And the third type of qualitative study is the grounded theory whereby data is collected and analyzed then the theory is developed that is based on the grounded data that has been collected and this type of theory is used in purposive sampling. The fourth type is the historical study. In historical study, we have a concern on the identification, allocation, evaluation, and synthesis of data from the past. This type of study usually seeks to discover the events of the past and to relate these events to the present or future. Then the last type is the case study. A case study can be defined as just an in-depth examination of people or groups of people or institutions. So case studies may be considered qualitative or quantitative research depending on the purpose of the study and the design that has been chosen by the research. So generally, in qualitative case studies, the researcher must be interested in the meaning of experiences to the subjects themselves rather than generalizing the results to other groups of people. So the case studies can be used to generate an hypothesis, but they cannot test an hypothesis. And the downside of a qualitative study is that it is time consuming and costly to carry out. Thank you for following us to the end of this tutorial.